what we'll be doing is we'll be demonstrating a sweat test using the 3710 Macroduct Advanced system. First, what we need to do is we need to turn it on. We'll power it up. The screen comes on. Now we'll put in the cables. It'll line up, it self-aligns, clicks in to know, and ensure that you have a good connection. What we'll need to do now is, you can see it's still powering up. While it's powering up, and it tells us, and as we go through the screens, it will show us step by step what we need to do. So you can see we have the Macroduct Advance system. It has the date, time. We can go through the screens. The screens, what it shows us now is ionophoresis supplies. We have the cables, which we connected up while it was powering up. We have straps that will connect our collection um, Macroduct 2, and we also have the pilot gel discs, which are here. So now what we do next, we'll go through the operator. The operator will put my name, I'm just going to put my initials, the PN for initials, and the information. The test, the test, we're just going to number the test today, just so you can see what we're doing. The test will be number one. We advanced on. The kit number. The kit numbers, what we're looking at is either you can use the kit number here or you can use the lot number of the pilot gel disc that you prefer. What I prefer doing is we'll use the kit number. The kit number here, we have the lot number located. It's 218036. So what we'll do, it is required. So it's 218036. We will enter it. As you can see, all information has been entered. The operator, the test kit, I mean the test number and the kit. We will now select the limb. We have our volunteer here, thank you. Now the baby is facing you, so you need to make sure you click the right side of the patient. So this time we will be looking at it. There, have the right arm. Okay, now what we're going to do is going to collect and clean the arm, get it ready for the iontophoresis testing. Move everything out of the way. We have our arm. First we recommend is cleaning with alcohol. We want the area down towards the lower part of the arm, away from, can you move your fingers please? We don't want it down here at the tendon area because then the uh, macroduct can't get a nice Seal. What we want to be is up in more of the fleshy area, so we'll clean with the alcohol prep. Then we will rinse with water following the instructions. So we have a clean area and we want it large enough for the macroduct advanced for the red and the black area. Now that we've cleaned the arm, we cleaned it with the alcohol and deionized water, we will move on to attaching the electrodes. That's the next step. What we do is we attach the red electrode first. We need the gel. Now one thing you'll be aware of, if you don't have the gel on, the machine will alarm you. So that's one safety feature we have. So what we're going to do is the electrode here. Placed on, we want to put a drop of water on the arm to get a better contact. So a little drop of water right there. Place the electrode on the arm. We'll feed the strap through on the electrode on the strap. So you hook it. And what we can do is feed it up and over this way or the other way, whichever is more convenient. What you do is tilt the electrode, feed the strap through. You can see where we nice get a nice little. We want it firm. You don't want it really tight to mass mash the electrode. Can you wiggle your fingers, please? What we're doing here is we're make, making sure that we're up above this tendon area so that we get a nice firm seated electrode. 
Now if you go through it, it says with the red, notice we have the water on the skin. The water with, between the electrode and the skin helps give it a better contact. So now what we'll do next is we move on to the next screen. The next screen tells us to attach the black electrode. We need to have a disc, add the disc, we add the disc to the black electrode now. You can either wet the electrode this way or it was like we did before, we had the drop of water added to the arm. Whichever is easiest and most convenient for you. But you do want the drop of water on there to get a better contact and have the iontophoresis be a little bit um, more consistent for you. Okay, so what we do is we feed the strap through. Oops. There you go. We we'll feed it through. Now we have it coming through under the arm. Feed it through, and then we have the multiple holes to pop the electrode on and hold it snugly. Now we've got them here. You can see you'll want to double check those always. Make sure that we're on there good and tight. It's not really tight, just make sure it's in good contact with the skin. So we follow with the next step. Now we start the iontophoresis. Start the iontophoresis here and it's going to take us through the five minutes of iontophoresis and you can see it's still going to do the 1.5 milliamps as it goes through. It's filling here, starting the iontophoresis. Your patient sitting here quiet. You'll show the band as we go through. It's going to do the contact time. This will go on for five minutes. As we approach the end of the iontophoresis, what we're going to do is we're going to prepare and get things ready for to remove the electrodes. The electrodes will remove the black one first and then remember where the red one is so that we can um, know where we need to put the collection device. So here we are at the end of the iontophoresis at the 300 seconds. Now it beat for us. Now what we're going to do is the iontophoresis is complete. So we'll need to go on. It just tells us. First, now we're going to remove the electrodes. One thing you need to be sure is when you take these electrodes off, remember which one's the red one and which one was the black one. What we'll do is remove the black one, which is the furthest up on the arm. Makes it easy. It's, the straps are easy to remove. Black electrodes off. Then we will do both electrodes. The red one was down the lower end, like we had, away from the tendon. We are going to clean the arm and clean and dry it. You can see that we had the indentations. We had the indentations of where the iontophoresis was. We've cleaned the arm with deionized water on our chem wipe. Cleaned it. We want to have it partially dry. Now we move on to the next screen. We need our collection supplies. We have our tubes, which we're going to use. We have our nippers. We have our syringe to collect. Now we have our collection um, macro duct. Do not touch the back of the macro duct because we don't know what spins on your hands. You don't want to have any kind of contamination. What we'll do is take one of the straps that we had previous, feed it through the arm, click. Now what you're going to have is you remove the backing. We will place it where the red electrode was located. You can see the red electrode was down here towards the bottom. Lift the strap. Now what we're going to do is lift the arm. This is where we need to make sure the strap is on tight. The collection device is on tight because we're depending on the hydrolysis of the sweat gland to push sweat up into the collection device. You can see it's kind of wiggled here, 
we want to make sure it's slightly uncomfortable. We want it tight, but not uncomfortable that the patient won't, it won't um, complain. You can see where we've got it raised. So you can see the skin's been raised in the collection device right there. Now what we'll do here is we're going, now that we've got it, we'll move on. We attach the collector. You can see the way we've attached. Now we go on. Then we want to wait till the first sweat is visible before we start the 30 minute collection time. The sweat collector device has a blue dot of dye on it. The dot, when the sweat comes up, the sweat will be colored blue because of this dye. What we're looking for is that first sweat coming through. It may take up to one or two minutes. We'll just wait and then once that sweat begins, we will start timing. We'll go 30 minutes at that time. And we see sweat. We start the timing. You see the timing going and then we will collect for 30 minutes. Okay, what we've done is, as you can see where the timing guard is located, we now are at 12 minutes. But what we're going to do is we're going to pop the cover off. So you can remove that so you can see the progression of the sweat. You can see that the sweat has progressed past. We have two marks on the coil. On the second mark here, that indicates that you have enough sweat to be able to do the sweat analysis. So for demonstration purposes, we're going to proceed on. So we've gone in at 12 minutes and 45 seconds. We've collected enough sweat. I've got the nippers. We're going to pull it up. You can see where the marks are. The marks are located one here where it comes to sweat and then up here where you've collected enough sweat to do the analysis. Okay, the next step is what we do is pulled up. You can see what I've done. Grabbed it between the two marks. Now we've got the sweat ray that we've done. You can see where it's gone so we can keep it there. And we mark it that the sweat test is valid. Come through. Now what we have is we have the syringe. What we want to do is make sure the syringe is open like this. We add the microbore tubing to it. Set this down. Collect the sweat by nipping. Now what we'll do is we'll move to our collection device. Thank you. And then we have enough area in our syringe right here that we can push and push the sweat into our collection device. See we have it in the bottom of our tube. Close the collection tube and you can see you have enough collected to be able to do your sweat analysis. Now what we need to do, as you can see, re-highlight that. We've inserted the needle, we've pulled the syringe out, we've collected the sample, we re need to remove, move all of our apparatus away. We will take the, now that you have the sample collected, take the collector off the arm. We need to make sure we clean the arm well which we've done. Then now we need to take care of, thank you for your help. Now what we do is you discard the collection. You can see it's been used. Get rid of that. The straps, the straps can be used as disposables or they can be cleaned. Now what we need to do is we need to clean our electrodes. To clean the electrodes, you notice they've been sitting off to the side so what we do is you take out the pilot gel discs, discard those. Okay, one thing we recommend is either using just a little bit of water to get any excess waste out. What we're going to do is take the alcohol preps, clean the electrodes with isopropyl alcohol. Now, if you, we've found that over time that sometimes the, the electrodes do not come clean with just the alcohol cleaning. We do provide a macroduct cleaning pads, which are these little pads. 
the SS-271s. They're very small. You just put them on the electrode with your finger. Clean. What well, there is a slightly abrasive to be able to clean the electrodes and get any of that excess contaminants off. You can see that may turn your pad a little color. Now to put them away, before you put them away, suggest wiping them. Any excess debris with the wet, wet chem wipe. Okay, we've cleaned those. You can see that we did, we had enough fluid or enough sweat to do our test because we've got past the two lines. We said the operator was Patty Nelson, the test one, the kit number, and the iontophoresis was complete. It shows which arm we used, and the test was a success. Thank you.